Hi, this is Nicole Hetty from Paper Tray Ink, and today I'm going to show you how to do a little technique that I call watercolor splats. Uh, this is achieved by using a dye ink on your background and then by adding splotches of water it automatically lightens the color a little bit and gives you this cool artistic effect. So let's start with applying the color to the cardstock. I have a piece of Stamper Select white cardstock here and I have a couple sponge daubers and I'm going to be using a couple different colors of ink. I have Hawaiian Shores, Tropical Teal, Simply Chartreuse, and Limeade Ice. I'm going to start with my blues first, Hawaiian Shores specifically. I'm going to get this sponge dauber here. And the important thing to do to remember when doing this technique is that your ink pads are really well inked. If they're dry, um, your results are going to be a bit more splotchy. And you always want to remember to do complete strokes back and forth, especially when you're starting, because if you stop in the middle, you'll end up with a splotch in the middle that will be hard to get rid of later. So just always do consistent strokes just like this. Now you can achieve different looks depending on how heavy you put your color on. Um, you can keep it really soft like this if you like, but I like to go fairly dark myself. I feel like especially when doing the water splats that they show up better if your color is a bit more intense. Now what you want to remember to do, you're going to be blending your colors to get a bit of an ombre effect. So you want to basically fade out your color. So what I do is ink up my dauber here and just keep going until the ink runs out. And you can see how it gets that lighter shade there. And I just did exactly what I told you not to do, which was to create a splotch in the middle of your paper because it is really hard to get rid of. But I'm going to keep working with it and that way you can see how you can fix the problem yourself if you do that by accident. So now I'm opening up the Tropical Teal and I'm going to pretty much work in the same exact fashion. I like to start a little bit um, after the color I just used because I want to blend them together and have the darker portion to the left of the lighter color. So I start here and then just start fading it into the Hawaiian Shores. When you see lines like this, you just want to keep blending it until you're happy with it. Dye ink's pretty um, flexible, and if, you, if you're having trouble getting rid of the straight lines that might be bothering you, you can do a little bit of a circular motion once you have your colors blended a bit more. Okay, I think that about does it for the blues. Now I'm going to move on to the greens. I'm going to do Simply Chartreuse next. Switch to a green dauber here. I kind of keep one for each color family, so I've got one for my blues and one for my greens. Okay, Start just a bit to the left of the color I just did and work my way over. And especially when you've got two dark colors like this, you really want to make sure the two are blended well and almost create another strip of color in there. It 
my lighter edge here. Okay, now I'm going to bring in Limeade Ice to finish this. And I'm actually going to flip this around, it'll be a little bit easier. And I actually want to leave a little bit of a white edge here. So I'm kind of fading it out. Okay, so there's my completed cardstock. Okay, so now we want to do the um, watercolored splats, and um, what I want to do is talk to you a little bit about paint brushes for this. For this technique, you're going to want a bit of a rounder brush, um, something like these. Um, they help you get a nice round splotch of water when you lay the paintbrush tip onto your paper. What you want to try to avoid are the more flat brushes like this. Um, they give you more of just um, a rectangular block of water that just doesn't look um, very artistic. It ends up looking very purposeful where you want this to look a bit more casual like you just splattered the water on there. So to get that look you want to use um, more of a rounded brush and avoid these flat brushes. I'm going to go ahead and this is my favorite round brush right here. And I'm going to get some water and you really want to get the brush loaded up, get it fully saturated and you want to just go straight down with your tip and let the water pool. And you can make your pool of water bigger by just laying the tip of your paintbrush right into the middle of the splotch and just let the water do its own thing. You don't need to brush it around or anything, just do little droplets. The harder you press your breast tip onto the page, the bigger your water splotch will be. And like I said, you can always add to it by getting more water. Just adding your water to the center of the little puddle you already have. If you just let it do it, let it do the work. Now I like to add little dots around the big dots to make it look a bit more like it was just splattered on there casually. And you don't want very much water on your brush for that. You just want to barely touch the tip of your brush onto the paper. Just a little light touch. I recommend doing the big splotches kind of in groups of three. Um, it helps to add a little bit more balance. Okay, that looks pretty good to me. So now I can move on to my die cutting. Okay, here I've gone ahead and run this through uh, my die cutting machine. And I'm going to carefully remove the die like this. And some of the numbers will be stuck in there, but that's okay. Um, I'm going to end up wanting to keep the center of this 4 to use later and the center of the 6. So I'm going to kind of set those aside here. Move the 7. And what I'm going to do is adhere this to my project, to my white card front. And you want to use a little bit of extra... Adhesive because the little droplets of water you've added will, might make the cardstock warp just a tiny bit. I'm going to adhere this in place 
onto my card front. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the numbers back in place. I've got a two-way glue pen and I die cut the numbers a second time just out of plain white cardstock over here and that's what I'm going to hear in place. I'll just show you how I do a couple of them. It's pretty straightforward. Oops. Put the two right in place there and I'll show you how I do a number that needs the center replaced here. I took the center out of the colored six and I'm going to put some a little bit of glue on the back here and pop that back into place like this and then take the colored piece and add it So it looks a little something like this. So I'm going to go ahead and add the rest of those numbers right now. After I have all of the numbers in place, the very last thing I'm going to do is add a sentiment right in the lower corner of that. And there's the completed card.